You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as she interviews others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpause their life. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Estes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy. The Addictions Coach and Rehab Rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. Hey, everybody, you are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes of the Addictions Coach and the Addictions Academy. Very excited for my guest today. Dr. Lori Shemek is with us, and she is a leading fat cell researcher, health expert, weight loss expert, keynote speaker, and recognized authority on inflammation and its role in weight loss, preventing disease, and optimizing health. She is the best selling author of How to Fight Fat Flammation and the best-selling author of Fire Up Your Fat Burn. She is a health expert for ABC TV's Good Morning Texas, and she's been featured pretty much everywhere. The Doctor, CNN, NPR, Fox, Oprah, Dr. Oz, etc., etc. She is known as the Inflammation Terminator and has made it her mission to help clients lose weight and educate the public on the toxic effects of certain foods and lifestyle choices and how they create inflammation in the body, resulting in weight loss, and poor health. Welcome, Dr. Lori. Thank you, Kelly. It's so great to be here. I've really been looking forward to this. So, um, you know, just been, we connected, what, about a month ago or so yeah. on my podcast, and you were absolutely fantastic. Um, and so I, that, you know, this really was uh, a nice gift, again, to connect with you. So thank you. Well, I had so much fun on your podcast. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank we you. loved having you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on. And I think we have some sure. similar views. So why don't you tell our mm-hmm. audience what you do uh, and how you became the inflammation terminator, which I love that. <laughs> um, so what I do is I'm a health expert, nutrition expert, weight loss. I help my clients lose weight and optimize their health. And um, I work on behavioral change. I work on mindset change. And I write a lot. I have... Uh, two books out, Fire Up Your Fat Burn and How to Fight Fat Inflammation. And I write articles and um, in, in the process of writing a book right now on the ketogenic diet. So it's, you know, it's a, I never thought I'd be a writer, but, you know, <laughs> here I am writing, writing away. So I grew up in a single family uh, with a single mother, I mean, and my poor mother had a constant stream of different health conditions. And unfortunately, my mother made choices that weren't healthy for her. So she smoked a pack and a half of cigarettes a day. She was extremely overweight, uh, verging on obese. She was under chronic stress. You can imagine trying to raise three young children, of which I was the oldest on your own. You know, she had no family, no husband, no money. And so you can imagine her quality of life and our quality of life, right? Mm -hmm. So she was pretty much an absent parent. And I took the responsibility of taking care of my two younger brothers. And, you know, I remember walking into my mother's dark room often and just seeing her laying there suffering. And, you know, and I knew intuitively that she could make different choices uh, because, you know, you just, as a child, you know better, but being that young, you don't have the authority to recommend anything. Right. So uh, she continued with her, her lifestyle choices and, and slowly her health deteriorated and she died at the very young age of 36. Oh, wow. And when, yeah, and she, because we had no family, we had nowhere to go. 
So we all three were separated and my, they found my father and he took my middle brother and my youngest brother, Lance, went to live with a family, a friend's daughter. Okay. And I went with my grandparents in Texas. And so, uh, we were never to live together again. And yet we stayed and were very close and in touch. But, you know, and I bring this up only to show people that the choices that they make really have an influence, not just on their health and their, their mindset, right? And their, their behavior, but also to other people in their world. Okay. Um, had my mother chosen different or made different choices, things may have been different. And it's, it's really sad because so many people like my mother throw their hands up in the air, are overwhelmed, and they feel as if this is their lot in life. You know, this is the hand they've been dealt, and they feel that they don't have any options when in fact they really do. So that is why I went into the field of doing what I'm doing. I knew I wanted to help people uh, understand that they do have choice in life. That was my goal, that that they don't have to give up and surrender. And also, uh, I was always inter- interested in health. And so, you know, even as a nine-year-old, eight-year-old girl, you'd see me just reading medical books or, you know, <laughs> nutrition books. If somebody told me something was healthy for me, I'd just scarf it up and eat it up. So the combination of the, of the two led me to helping at-risk families. Uh, with an organization called Family Outreach. And I uh, eventually became, I went from being a um, counselor for the families to the vice president of the organization. And and I remember I would give my clients uh, new foods, new food choices to make. I'd actually write out a menu for them. And it was truly astonishing to see how powerful that food was on their the way they acted on their health um the choices that they ma- they made the elevation in spirit and even their children's health changed so eventually i decided to create my own business and i went back to school <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had got, I received my doctorate in psychology and then went back to school to become a nutritionist. And then again, I got my certification as a life coach and went into helping other people improve their lives uh, via their health and mindset. And so, uh, that's my, that's where I am today. I focus on reversing low level inflammation in the body because that type of inflammation is the core cause, underlying cause of most illness, disease, faster aging, and waking. And that's where I got the name, the inflammation terminator. <laughs> that's so interesting you say this. And first, I want to commend you. You came from, uh, you know, a tough upbringing to bring yourself where you are. And, Thank you. you know, you're well known and you've done such a great job. It's not easy. So that's awesome. Um, Thank you. In terms of inflammation, it's so interesting. My mother, and we talked about this on your podcast, mm-hmm. was, you know, the binge eater, the food addict, and she ended up with all these health problems. And I sent her to a naturopath, and the underlying thing he said to her was inflammation. Inflammation causes illness. Inflammation causes disease. And we end up, as a society, we don't treat the inflammation. We treat the disease that's come from the inflammation. Exactly. Exactly. Instead of finding the core underlying cause of something, you know, uh, we just treat, obviously, the, we get, it's the Band-Aid syndrome, right? We just treat it with a Band-Aid. You have mm-hmm. high cholesterol, take the statin. Why do you have high cholesterol? Sometimes maybe even that's not so bad. It may be protective. And so, you know, that's the problem with Western medicine that they don't they don't look for the core cause. Now if you go to a, a functional medicine specialist or physician, they will root out the core cause and that's exactly what we want. And more and more physicians are gravitating towards that field because um it's the really the right way to do it. Now there's a place for western medicine in terms of emergency care, acute care, right? 
you know, if you have pneumonia, you need those antibiotics and you break a leg. And but uh, more times than not, if you have, you know, um, an earache, they'll give you antibiotics when you really don't need them. Right. Or yeah, or a cold or whatever. Uh that's what got me so sick. When I was growing up, I was allergic to cigarette smoke, but they didn't know that. And my father was a chain smoker. So he would oh, smoke. Oh, no. Yeah. In the house, he was smoking in the car. Oh, no. And I had sinus problems. I had ear problems. So in and out of the ear doctor, I had tubes in my ears, tubes out. I am completely deaf in my right ear, and all my teeth fell out. Oh, no. And <gasps> the only solution was the antibiotics. So I was on antibiotics from birth to 14. And I got my first root canal at 14 and I had 17 cavities. I'll never forget that. And oh, I was no, Callie. devastated. And my mother to this day, she's like, well, what's up from the antibiotics? I'm like, yes, it is. It destroyed my body, destroyed my yep. gut. And I metastasize food completely different from other people. If I have half a glass of wine, I'm lit. And people don't realize mm -hmm. that. They say, well, just half a glass of wine. I'm like, well, I don't have. You know, I have permeated colon. I have all the garbage from all that stuff. And, and you I'm, may be lacking a, a special enzyme that helps to metabolize the alcohol. There's an enzyme. Yeah, Asian people have are lacking this enzyme as well. Hmm. Many Asian people. Interesting. Mm hmm. We'll have to talk further about that off air. But I just find it fascinating how modern medicine doesn't stop and say, well, why are her ears like that? Why is she having sinus problems? You know, what's happening in the house? Is there mold? Is there smoke? It's just, oh, you have an ear infection. Here's an antibiotic. Yeah, exactly. the same thing happened to me as well. You know, it was, a, it was a constant stream of ear infections. And guess what? Everyone around me, now that you're saying this, I'm re I remember, uh, was smoking back then. And... Um, this day and age, it's, you don't see that as much, but, but back then smoking was the thing. And so it, you look at all those older movies and almost everyone in those movies smokes, you know? Yeah. To this day, if you go to my grandmother's house in Potsdam and look up, the tiles are yellow on the ceiling. And I can't believe you're saying that. Yep. They're yellow yeah. from everybody in there would sit around and smoke. It's what they right. did. I went to visit my grandmother. She, my grandfather went in the hospital, so I went to stay with her and take care of her. And she was a chain smoker and, uh, terribly so where I had to just leave the room to breathe, right? And, um, after she died, we took her, her painting, not her paintings, her, you know, the, um, um, these little sketches and they would take the glass off and they literally took a razor blade and just sheared off all of the tar. Wow. From Ugh. from all of the smoke and her ceiling as well. I started to clean her ceiling for her and then I went, forget it. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And the same thing in my house. My mom started ripping down the wallpaper. And the house was built in the 40s. And it's layer after layer. Mm -hmm. And when you get back to the last layer, it's yellow. And I, I just said to her, I'm like, that's so disgusting. Like how... How do you live in a house like that? And she said, that's what they did back then. That was culture. That mm -hmm. was, you came over, you smoked, left the windows closed. And, you know, now we know it causes cancer and it does all these things. But, I mean, it's, I think our culture drives what we do. And our culture drives what oh, yeah. we tolerate. Right. And the culture at large listens to uh, responsible bodies. And I'm, those are air quotes. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that say smoking is okay for you, even though they knew that it caused cancer, for example. And, you know, one of the um, similar uh, situations that's happening now is cell phone use. And everyone's uh, pretty much in denial about it, including myself. I really don't want to give it up, you know. Yeah. Um, but again, here we have, we know what the, the truth is about, and it's coming out more and more, like even those earbuds. You know, that people are wearing. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a petition that it just went out with the top 250 scientists around the world, uh, making it, they want it known. They want people to know how dangerous this is. And, um, anyway, it's like, you know, attaching an antenna to your head, really. But, um, but, you know, here we have people, we have, uh, uh, bodies 
of responsible organizations that are saying it's okay. It's not going to hurt you, you know? And so that's what we all want to believe, right? Yeah. It's, we don't want to give up our cell phone. Who does? It's so convenient and wonderful. But the truth is the truth, and it's coming out more and more. Well, think about just this. I, you know, I, I don't have kids, but I watch mm-hmm. people on Facebook pack their kids' lunches, and I see sandwiches on white bread with lunch meat, followed by chips in a bag, followed by ding dongs, ho hos, and whatever other little candy cake there is, and a juice box. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, there's not one piece of food in that lunch. It's all food like product. There's no banana. There's no apple. There's no grapes. Everything is processed food. And they send them off to school and these kids can't sit still. They're jumping around and then they go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, they have ADHD. And I'm thinking to myself, no, they don't. They have garbage to eat. If they're going to eat, thank garbage, you. <laughs> right. They're going to act like that's that. really so, true. I want to hear your opinion on that. So our listeners, they get tired of me saying that. I want to hear what you <laughs> think because you're the expert. Well, you know, I agree with you, <laughs> but um, it's yeah, it is. I see that in a lot of people, even though the mothers are trying their best to feed their children healthy, they're at, they're giving them food and they feel like oh, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a mother. The, the, they may not know that in those bread slices lies two tablespoons of sugar, right? Mm-hmm. And it's bumping up their children's blood sugar level. And when that happens, you're causing low level inflammation. Uh, the juice is even worse. Okay. And in, in a way, um, because it's fructose and fructose plays havoc with, uh, especially if you have an excess amount of sugar and fructose in your diet, the liver, is your largest fat burning organ it's the 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 organ you must take care of in order to optimize to keep your health to keep healthy and to allow it to do its job of removing uh, toxins out of the body but um, because people are eating the way they're eating now children and adults are coming they they actually have and they a lot of the majority of them do not realize it they have uh non alcoholic fatty liver disease mm-hmm. and children have it which is ungodly it's unheard of that a child would have this um but it's it's all related to the types of foods that they're being fed that they're eating so the white bread or even whole wheat bread is high in sugar and it's really important to eat bread that doesn't have any sugar, but the transition to that kind of bread is, is, um, challenging, especially when you have children, right? But it, it is something that needs to be done, uh, bread without sugar. You can find it. There are some that out there that, um, are, uh, children do like. So it's important to just look at the ingredient list. Um, but the sugar is, is very important. There are processes that go on in the body when you ingest sugar that, uh, again, they not only um, affect the function of tissues within the body, all the organs in the body, the skin, uh, your skin, uh, wrinkles, and sagging skin all come about because of a process called glycation. So you all know the brown crispy potatoes on the stove. Mm-hmm. That crispy part is called glycation. It's uh, the browning effect, essentially, Caramel- caramelization. And that same process happens in the human body. So when you eat sugar, proteins and sugar, uh, they attach. And it changes the function and nature of the tissue in the body. So imagine doing this every day of your life. Uh, you would eventually pay the, the, um, you would pay for this in the end because you're, you're eating foods that are processed, that are not good for you. The body doesn't know what to do with processed foods. When you ingest sugar, it's like, well, what do we do? Okay. Well, let's, well, let's just store it right now because we don't know what to do with it. Um, so we get our fat cells get packed with sugar. Our liver gets packed with sugar. And again, if you're trying to lose weight, sugar, um, glucose, the, the, the liver, it can't hold a lot of glucose, right? So then it 
goes to the muscle cells and muscle cells can't hold a lot of it. We end up storing whatever it's, it's circulating and it's all stored up. Okay. So the liver that is now um, holding all this sugar is really becoming unhealthy. And if you see two pictures side by side, a healthy liver and one that's packed with glucose and other compounds, you will see the a market difference. And what you, you don't want that. You want your liver to be healthy. You want your liver to be able to do what it's supposed to do. And um, so anyway, back to the children. That's what's happening to our children right now when they're fed white bread, mm -hmm. uh, even whole wheat bread, juice, chips. And that's your typical lunch, you know, maybe some jam on that bread, but or, you know, um, cold cuts with sugar in them. You just have to be really careful about what you're eating. You must read the ingredient list. That's all there is to it. I teach classes for adults to become mm -hmm. recovery coaches, food addiction coaches, et cetera. And the one thing I make them do, uh, it's a 48 hour class. So it's five hours each day is in between the two classes, they have to go sugar-free. And these are adults. These are people 18, I think my oldest one was 75. And mm -hmm. when I say I want you to go sugar-free for 24 hours, you would think I asked them to do like some insurmountable thing they could never do. It's the same reaction. They all look at me like, I can't do that. And I always say, well, why mm -hmm. not? Well, everything has sugar in it. And I had one lady say to me, she's like, well, I don't like the taste of the food without sugar. And I said, it's not supposed to be sweet. Certain foods are not meant to be sweet. Bread should not be sweet. It's not exactly designed for that. And exactly. Said, what am I supposed yeah. to eat? I said, you want something sweet? Eat a banana. And she goes, well, that's not sweet. I said, then your taste buds are off because somebody who doesn't eat sugar, when they eat a banana or grapes, it's very sweet. And it should be. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a piece of cake, it's sickening sweet. That's how you know mm -hmm. it's too sweet. And that's how you know when you finally uh, kicked sugar to the curb as mm -hmm. well. I, I was addicted to sugar in my um, early 20s when I was going to school. And I got off it. And I, I was able, be, because I knew that I was addicted. And I knew I didn't want that in my life. I did not want to be chained to that food. I, ha I felt I had to have it every day. And that's not good. And so, um, you know, getting off sugar was like one of the best things I ever did. It's very liberating. But I remember when I would, and to the, even to this day, I don't have sugar in my diet very rarely. When I eat sugar, it's like cake or something like that. It's beyond, like you said, sick, sickeningly sweet. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to describe it. But what happens, your, your taste buds actually do change. They, they transition in every three days. We, we have new taste buds develop. And so if you've been off sugar for even a couple days, you're going to see a, a huge difference, um, in the way things taste. And salt is the same way. It's interesting you said that. Um, I mean, my husband is like the junk food king. Like he can literally eat Burger King, <laughs> McDonald's. It doesn't affect him. We get our blood work. I remember work you saying that. Oh yeah. my God. His blood work's perfect. And so I made him go junk food free. No, no fast food, no nothing. And the mm -hmm. first day, you know, he was like horrified. He's like, what am I going to eat for breakfast? I'm like egg whites. And he just looked at me. He's like, that's gross. I'm like, well, you're going to eat it anyway. So he did. And he got off of it. And I said, now I want you to go to the Burger King drive through and get the garbage you normally get your, you know, burger and your French fries and your diet Coke. And tell me how you feel. And he goes, I'll be fine. And he went. He called me 20 minutes later after he ate. And he goes, I feel sick. And I said, tell me how sick you feel. He goes, I'm tired. He goes, I can't think. He goes, I was trying to describe something. And the word I'm looking for is blue. He goes, I couldn't remember the word blue all of a sudden. And I said, Do you oh, know wow. How many chemicals are in that food? And he goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, it's not meat. It's a meat like product. You know, they're right. putting ammonia in it. They're putting bleach in it. You're ingesting this stuff. It's going to impact how you think and how you feel. And he goes, I want to lay down and take a nap. He goes, or I want to throw up. And I'm like, well, honestly, you know, throwing up might be the best thing you can do because it's going to take you a while <laughs> to process the food. So fast forward to the next day, I said, how do you feel? He goes, I still feel funny. He goes, I still feel cloudy. And I said, that's the count. Wow. 24 hours later, mm -hmm. it took him 48 hours to purge the garbage and he finally Isn't said that, he, and that yeah 
Yeah, and a lot of that that those toxins are stored in the fat cells mm-hmm. in our fat. And that's not good. So when you do detox and, and say it does get released, it, it does cause some uncomfortable um, manifestations. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is so interesting. So tell me a little bit about the new book you have coming out. What What's that about? Well, that's it's going to be a guide um, on helping people, you know, navigate through the ketogenic diet, different types of intermittent fasting, and how... Um, maybe combining them is actually more conducive, say, to women over 40. So if you're menopausal um, or men uh, that are over 40 and you have stubborn belly fat, the older we get, our hormone levels change and we then have, you know, our metabolism slows down and we do have stubborn resistant weight. And so the one thing that I have found is intermittent fasting combined with a ketogenic diet or some very low carb eating routine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have to be ketogenic, but this book is going to be more of a guidebook with um, many recipes in it for people to help them make better choices. But the, you know, it's interesting because people always say to me, well, isn't a ketogenic diet like an Atkins diet? And I always say, no, it's not at all. You know, the Atkins diet was high protein. Mm-hmm. And the ketogenic diet is a moderate type of protein. So, um, you know, it's, you know, there is a transition just like there is in any, any type of healthy eating where, you know, you you go from a really carb dependent, glucose dependent diet, you know, such as junk food <laughs> yeah. or, or whatever. And then you go to a healthier diet. You're di- you're not going to have as much carbohydrate intake, right? And so your cells are dependent upon that glucose, literally. And when that, when they're not getting it, they're going to be forced to using your own fat for fuel. And when the liver breaks down that fat, you create what's called an energy body called uh, ketones. And these ketones are powerhouses, I'm telling you, not just for weight loss, but for brain health, for reversing inflammation, uh, for more athletic ability, is tamping down on appetite. It is truly a, a wonderful way of eating. But the problem is many people cannot sustain uh, the ketogenic diet very long. And so what has been found through research is that when you combine the ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting here and there, it is more powerful and uh, you don't have to do all of it all the time. So you do intermittent fasting a couple days a week. You do the keto, you do ketogenic uh, food choices um, most of the time, and you're good to go. You can cycle in and out of more carbs, less carbs. So that's the way to do it. And in fact, that's the way we were genetically uh, programmed to do it anyway. Because you think about our ancestors roaming around hunting, right? they sometimes had a lot of carbohydrates, like they found a big bush of berries or they found a bee, a beehive with a lot of honey in it. Um, you know, that's a lot of carb intake at once. I want to stop uh, for one second. Were... So many mm-hmm. people don't realize fruits and vegetables are carbohydrate. And they say, well, that's, that's a, a good vegetable. point. Yes, you're right. So I have yeah. to have a rice or I have to have a potato or I have to have bread because that's what we had in the 40s and 50s. We had a meat, we had a starch, and we had a vegetable. And they don't realize mm-hmm. that the vegetables contain carbohydrates. So I find that in itself interesting. I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And yeah, so it's important for people to know that your carbohydrate intake should mostly come from uh, vegetables and non-starchy vegetables at that, if you're serious about it. If you just want vegetables, uh, high intake of vegetables with starchy carbs, with starchy vegetables, I mean, Um, that's fine, but chances are your weight won't fall off as easily, uh, depending upon your activity level. So if you're an athlete, yes, it probably will. But, um, and plus they, um, could you, they could benefit from the added, added glucose, depending on how strenuous their activity is. But, you know, what your end goal is, is to be metabolically flexible. So if, you know, say you've been doing uh, low carb 
and you've maybe inter- you've been intermittent fasting three times a week, then you have a sweet potato. Um, your body can handle that without you even coming out of ketosis, right? So um, that's your end goal is to become met- metabolically flexible. And it's easy to do once you know how to do it the right way. Awesome. Well, we are out of time, I'm sad to say, but oh, tell our yeah. listeners how we can, how they can find you. And okay, you can find me. Thank you. Uh, you can find me at drlorishemek.com and you can find both of my books on Amazon, How to Fight Fat Flammation and Fire Up Your Fat Burn. And I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram as Lori Shemek, Dr. Lori Shemek on Facebook and Lori Shemek on Twitter. And every day I post all over the place healthy tips for leading a healthy, optimized life. Awesome. And we will post that up for all the listeners right up on the website. So you will have everything to access Dr. Lori. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us and we will put you in touch with her as well. Thank you so much. And for I also have a newsletter. Oh, go ahead. oh, you're so welcome. Yes. I also have a newsletter for those that are interested um, with a book metabolism masterclass. So when they get, they sign up for the book, they uh, or the newsletter, they get the book. So oh, it's awesome. right there on my landing page yeah perfect we'll put that all up and direct them over to your landing page wonderful it and was thank wonderful. you so much thank you okay you're very thank welcome you, you guys have been listening to unpause your life with dr Callie Estes. have a great day guys hey everyone thanks again for listening i really hope you enjoyed the show today head on over to itunes and apple podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think Or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call. And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. I took a walk down the long road The weather said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason To wake up another day But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Faith or religion But nothing to show for it No need to Down the dark road Where they said that I shouldn't go I knew the dangers of flying Now I'm so far from silent ground But they need